Okay, so for the for the lecture at the moment, what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of SEO, search engine optimization. So we're going to go to Google, one of the search engines that exists out there. There's more than that, as we will see in the lecture. Now, let's do this practice where you search for yourself. So however your main name is however you know yourself or if you have like an online persona or whatever search for yourself so I'm gonna just do it in terms of I'm just gonna search for Victor Campos so search for yourself now as I'm typing of course I'm getting these suggestions so at a certain point it's like do you mean Victoria's Secret no I don't uh, do you mean Victor Campos the actor no I don't uh, do you mean this or that the attorney in Eureka, California? No, I don't. But search engines um, are websites that go all over the internet to find all that they can and store it so that then when someone searches, it pops up the results. That's what a basic search engine is. They've been around since the beginning of the web. Websites have been around since 1989. How many of you knew that websites were invented in 1989? One person. Okay, you get 100 bonus points right there, minus 10 for everyone else. You should know this basic stuff. So, websites have been around for a while. What was an early, ancient search engine that was around like when the dinosaurs were around? Anyone know? Yahoo. Yahoo was one of them. There were other ones. AOL's been around also a while. Um, Yahoo, that was one of them. Well, the search engines have evolved over the years to get better and better. So what, what you should have done right now is you should have searched for yourself and then press enter. And I get a bunch of results here. So the number one result, that's not me. I was not born in 1935. So what else appears here? Facebook stuff. The actor, there is an example of me, actually, two of them. Um, I do get a couple of results here at um, one of them is San Diego Continuing Education. So one of them is at the other college that I teach at. And one of them is ratemyprofessors.com over at that, uh, at that site. Have any of you heard of that website before, ratemyprofessors.com? Okay. If you haven't heard about it, it's a website. It's like the Yelp of, um, of colleges. You can uh, rate instructors and classes, and like maybe you're going to take a math class. And then there's like three examples. And uh, you don't know which one to take, so you look up the instructor and see this one's really mean. They give a lot of homework, so I'm going to take the other one. So I have two results here that I see so far. Um, then a bunch of photos and examples. How many of you found, without going further than the first page here, how many of you found at least one result that is you? Anyone? Couple people? Okay, cool. Was it positive or negative? Positive, okay. Hopefully positive. So obviously what we're doing right now is the practice of Googling ourselves. We are searching for ourselves in our name and maybe finding something about ourselves. Okay, let's do this. On a separate tab in the browser, I'm going to open another tag. I'm going to go to another search engine, bing.com, B-I-N-G, bing.com. How many of you have heard of Bing before? Okay, so Bing is just another search engine. It's kind of got a prettier interface. It's got a cool photo of the day, I guess, and then news and stuff. But it's just a search engine. It's just another way to uh, search for stuff. Let's Bing yourself right here by searching for yourself the same way you did on Google a moment ago. Now, that's not actually a word, binging yourself, but let's do it. Let's search for yourself. If I look at my results kind of side by side, do you know the trick about showing your screen side by side like that? If you drag your window to the right side until it snaps to the right, you can then see two screens or two windows side by side. This is on Windows 10. So drag it all the way to the right, and then it'll snap to the edge. OK, so I'm going to see, the, I'm going to see them side by side. Um, Google at the moment is showing that the number one result is Victor Campos at the Internet Movie Database. 
and Bing is also showing the same thing. Google is saying at the minimum, Victor Campos was born in 1925, New York, etc. This one is saying Victor Campos was born in New York, etc. Spanish, Puerto Rican, Dominican, he began his career in 1966, etc. So both results are the same, but the Bing results give you a little bit more detail. This is a little limited right here. I know a little bit about that person, but here they talk about they were in these movies, Kojak, The Mod Squad, etc. The second result, I get another internet movie database, which seems to me redundant. It seems to be the same thing. Internet movie database, internet movie database. It seems to be the same thing. Then Bing is showing me Facebook. Uh, that's the usual Facebook screen that says, here's all the Victor Camposes that exist, and it's like a thousand or whatever. So it's a different result on Bing. I'm scrolling down a little bit on Google, and I see a map. For Victor Campos, the doctor, over there in Upland, California. And the next results on Bing are images. Images of uh, Victor Campos's. Okay, so that's different. Scrolling down, um, this is just to show you the comparison of two search engines and what they decide or what they believe is the best results when you're looking for something. This is, they're both websites that are traveling all over the internet, trying to find information and store it, so that when you search for something you care about, it gives you results. But each one has an algorithm. Each one has special software that they develop that they feel our answers are the best answers. And the other search engine says, no, ours is the best. Ours is the best answer. So. I'm getting a bunch of results on both sites. On Google, I have 64 and a half million results. And on Bing, I only have 3 million results. Which is better, 65, 64 million or 3 million? 3 million, maybe? Why? It narrows it down, maybe. Yeah, I get 64 million results, but I don't have time to look at 64 million. I'm going to look at maybe like 10 or 12. So just because I see the number that's really big over there, 64 million, doesn't mean anything, really. Might as well say 100 results, because I'm probably not even going to browse to 10, 12, 20 um, deep on the, on the results. So it may, however, be better. 64 million might be better because it did find more sites. Maybe Bing hasn't gotten around to finding all of the relevant things to show me. So there's no fully right answer which is better, except what's better in these top 10 results. Now, how many of you, when you search for something, do you go to page two of the results regularly? Sometimes. Sometimes, a few people, OK. How many of you go to page three of results? Very few. That might as well be page 3 million, right? If we don't get our answer on page 1, and probably 2, we're not going to get our answer. So SEO, search engine optimization, is the art and the science and the magic of getting ranked on the first page. Now, I searched for myself on two search engines right here that are pretty well known. Let's open up another tab or another window and let's go to the classic search engine yahoo.com. It's still around. It has kind of transitioned into more of a portal than just a search engine because you can get your email here. Here's the trends that are happening. Here's the holiday stuff. Um, what else? Subscriptions of things, I guess. And then I get a lot of um, results of um, news and stuff, even before doing anything, sports scores, and so forth. OK, I'm going to do the same thing. At the very top, I'm going to search for myself the same way. And uh, over here, apparently, it's Victor Campos, the athlete um, so three different search engines giving three d slightly different results 
Uh, I do see consistently that the top result seems to be Victor Campos, the actor. So there's doctors and actors and sports figures and instructors. And Yahoo again is doing what the other search engines do. It's browsing all over the internet. It's trying to find everything related to everything, Catalog categorize it, organize it, so that when you search, it gives you, quote, the best results. Now, if you were going to spy on me, I mean, if you were going to look me up, um, would you simply look for Victor Campos, or maybe how would you might be more specific? Location. Location. Let's try that. Let's try Victor Campos, or your name, plus location. Now, OK, location. What's the location that I should maybe pick for here? Chula Vista. Chula Vista, sure. So out of curiosity here, Chula Vista, I might try the same result, or I might try the same search on all three search engines. Your name plus location, give that a try. Search for yourself and then select some sort of location. You can be as specific as you want. California, San Diego, you know, Chula Vista, zip code, whatever. Search for yourself plus a location. So on Google, let me compare both of these. Chula Vista. What is that right there? Victor Campos' death. I don't want to see that. Chula Vista. I don't want to know that yet. Don't write me in your death note. Is that still relevant? Um, so, okay, searching for the myself on uh, location, Chula Vista. So the top result is a LinkedIn result on Google on. Um, Bing, I get Victor Campos Leon, 64 years old. I'm not 64 years old. Um, and then there's another Victor that is my middle name, but I don't know if that is me. My background report, I guess. Okay, here's on Bing, here is, I know, without even clicking yet, I know that this is me right here. This is my LinkedIn with my business on Bing. If I look over on. On Google, that's kind of a generic result. It's not me, neither is that. Being verified, I don't think that's me, that's not me. So just seeing these four results right here, I don't see myself on Google yet, but on Bing, I see myself on number three. So just kind of comparing the two right here with location. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to search also with the other search engine with Yahoo, the same sort of thing, just for curiosity. So number one again is that, um, is that other person? And I get also third place, the LinkedIn, which is me. And then fourth place, I get the rate my professor. So that is me. Um, OK, so let's say that there's still too many results. I see 8 million, this is interesting, I see 8 million on Google, but then I see 51 million on Bing. So that for whatever reason they reversed now, Bing is <coughs> less specific, and then Google is more specific for whatever reason. So again, this is the algorithm, this is the special software that each company has invented that is like trademarked and copyrighted and locked down and no one else can know about it. Only you, if you work in the company, you have to sign a contract that you'll never reveal it. So each search engine has a software, an algorithm that determines the best results, quote unquote. Let's try one more time here. Okay, let's say without location. How else, if you were going to search for me, if you were going to find out a little bit about me, how else might you search? What keywords or whatever? What's that? Occupation. Occupation. Okay. Uh, what should we put here? Victor Campos, what? Occupation is more like teacher, but Southwestern College as the place. But that would assume you knew maybe where I worked. So let's try teacher first. That's an occupation. So for yourself, um, see if you can kind of search for yourself, at, maybe trying that way as well, occupation. Um, see if that comes up. If, if you don't have an occupation at the moment, uh, how else can you search for yourself besides occupation? Maybe education, so maybe a school and such. Okay, so over at Google, the results that I get is history teacher at Esperanza College. That is not me. 
then there's a couple of other videos that appear over here that's not me and then in second place result that is me right there at San Diego continuing education so the point of that if I had searched for Victor Campos Southwestern College yeah that might have given me results of Victor Campos at Southwestern College but I teach in more than one place so if I use the keyword teacher instead of a specific place I also get this other result and then over on Bing so top result there also is that same history teacher second place is a Facebook result third place is my continuing education for the other college and then some videos and stuff then there's Southwestern College result Okay, so this exercise so far is that we are comparing different search engines with the same search terms, and we get slightly different results. I wouldn't say one is better than the other. They're different. You just get different results. And we are searching with keywords. We are searching with search terms. First of all, I started simply with the, with a, the name, and then I went with location, and then I, and then I went with um, occupation. Let's try one more. I'm going to search for, I haven't seen this myself, but I'm going to search for myself plus a hobby. Try to do that with yourself. Search your, your name, but maybe with a hobby. See if that is interesting. So I guess one of my hobbies is comic books. So let's see what results I get on both of these. Actually, on all three. I'm just for curiosity, I'm going to check it out on the three search engines that I've loaded up here. So I'm searching the top result on Yahoo is okay, great, I get this ad. Sometimes you see that as well. You get advertisements, not just results of what you're really looking for. And then I get a result from Target. I have never worked at Target, but that top result right there is Target, comic books at Target. Then I get a result of eBay. Well, all of this in this case in Yahoo all of this, and it's very subtle, there's a little line right here where everything above here are ads related to Victor Campos comic books. So I was searching for something specific, but then the search engine said, you might also be interested in these ads. And I look at that first one, and I'm like, nope. I look at the second one, not really. I look at the third one, maybe. Maybe I do want to go to eBay and go search for some comics there and get a good deal. But skipping the ads, let's see what else here. So I see Victor Campos, France, 562 books. So someone that is into books is over on the website goodreads.com. Have you heard of that website, goodreads.com? Goodreads is like a website where you, it's sort of like the Yelp of books. You can create an account and you can review books and share books and talk about books. And so the top result when I search that way is someone, I guess, in France. It is into books, and their top result is there. Then I'm seeing these other results. Second result here, that's, what, that's on one of my websites. I did a blog post. What does the UPC symbol on a comic book mean? So comic books, they have a UPC symbol on them, and that UPC's got a special code. So I did a video a few years ago on what does the code on a comic book mean. So one of the top results is my video. Um, or my blog post that is on that. And then I got a bunch of these other ones where oh, these are all of mine. I do these videos on comic books, getting these top results about that are me about my hobby. Let's see over on Bing. So there's something on Wikipedia there that's unrelated to me. There are a few issues. I mean, there are a few results. There's the, there's the, what does the UPC symbol mean? There's my top 20 cosplay of San Diego Comic Con 2017 article, and so forth. And then on Google, there is a link to the comic book database. You've probably heard of the IMDB, the Internet Movie Database. There's one about comic books. There's a link there. Uh, now, is that me or not? Um, I don't know, I do so much stuff online, I forget all about it. Um, no, that's not me. Okay, so uh, then I got my, my blog, and I got this and that. Okay, so 
Let's flip it around. Let's say I have a business. One of the businesses I'm involved with is a web design business. So let's think about your business, your website that you've been putting together throughout the semester. I have a business that's related to web design. Let's do a search on the search engines for a keyword about what your business is. Some of you are doing food reviews, some of you are doing like a meme collection, some of you are doing stuff about video games, whatever your website is, some of you are doing portfolio stuff and art stuff, whatever your website is about, let's do a search about a keyword about what your site is. My website is about web design. Now on purpose first, I am going to do a bad search and then I'll show you a good search. I won't explain what that is just yet, but search for one of the keywords of what your business is about, what your website is about. If you're not doing a business in the class, you're doing some kind of website about your portfolio or your resume or whatever. So whatever one topic that your website is about, whatever one topic, search for that on the search engines. And this Bing has 419 million results. If I'm reading this properly, this seems to say 14 billion results on Google. So this is a bad search in terms of no one's going to search this way. If you were looking for a particular person or business or thing, you're probably smart enough nowadays to be a little more specific you're not gonna search for something so simple like that web design I'm gonna search for you know top cheap top cheat codes for overwatch or whatever you're gonna be very specific you're not just gonna search for cheat codes you're gonna search for specific things you know how to become a millionaire before I turn 30 you know you're gonna look for specific things this is not specific at all and I'm never, my business is never going to be found here for a variety of reasons. One is that some businesses are going to pay to get to the top results. So those that are, of us that are not paying maybe are at a disadvantage. And here I see ads on Google and Bing. Google is a little bit more obvious. Everything that I'm showing right here is an advertisement. Someone paid for it. How can you tell on Google that it's an advertisement? It has a little symbol right there. Ad. The Bing hat? Yes. I can barely see it. It's right there. Bing has also a little marker that someone paid for it. Now, I'm not saying paying for this is bad. I'm just saying that um, if someone's trying to search for my business, and someone paid the search engines to get top results. There are some amount of people that are going to say, it's an ad, burn it with fire, I'm not even going to look at it. And there's other people that are going to say, okay, it's the top result, let me click. It's the number one, I'll click, even though it says ad. So some people that search are a little bit more savvy than others, and they see a top result, I'll click, that's what I mean. Some people will say, it's an ad, it's fake, I won't even click. You just have to know that those are those two possibilities. Because then after the ads, see, after the ads, scrolling, scrolling, after the ads, on Bing I get a whole bunch of things about like tutorials. I don't want to do it myself. I want to hire someone to do it. On Google I get an article about the theory of web design. I don't care about that. I need someone to do it. Nine skills you need to become a web designer. So the search engines didn't know what I wanted and therefore they gave me a bunch of irrelevant results. So what if I go back to search web design, Chula Vista, affordable for businesses, for, for um, yeah, for, uh, let's see, for a particular type of business, restaurants. So this is the smarter way to search. This is the way um, that more people are going to search in terms of not just a generic keyword, 
but more specific. I'm still going to get some ads. And right here, this company says, expert Chula Vista web designers, prices to suit all budgets. Now, based on what they wrote there, I'm, got, I'm kind of getting convinced they sound like they're experts. Prices are good. Okay, I might click. They are an ad. I'm not saying an ad is a bad word and that anyone that does it, you know, is automatically bad. I'm just saying that this is the reality nowadays of getting found. There are various people, various companies that are going to pay the search engines to get top results. And now that I've narrowed it down, I get only 217,000 results compared to what, 400 million? Compared to 12 billion? Again, so the number of things might not matter except for what, it, what works. So I get over here, getsetgoweb.com. And then I get a, a map over here. Oh, apparently on Google, I'm getting a map that shows that there's someone nearby. There's a couple of uh, businesses actually nearby. And they'll just drive us to them. Let's see on Bing. I don't see a map, but I see a lot of results as well. This ties into the assignment that you're going to um, work with this week. This week is about you doing this research and thinking about what are the keywords that people might search for when they want to find me. Like, I know what my business is, and I know what I provide, and I know I'm amazing. But regular people, when they're searching, they, they don't know you exist. Um, they don't know what they want. They don't know that they want you. So when I was more specific here, that was better. That seems to be giving me better results than just web design. So we're going to look at the canvas um, half of this in just a moment. But does that, does that make sense, what we're doing here? This is, this is searching. People are going to search like this. Any, any questions, comments so far? OK, so let's go over to Canvas to see how this activity ties into the, um, the assignments. Let's go to Canvas. So modern web design, you can get hired to make a website for a client, but also a lot of what you get hired for nowadays is also to do SEO, search engine optimization. I made you a great website, no one's visiting. The client is mad because why did I pay you so much, no one's visiting. Well, we made a great website, but we didn't do the other activities that were necessary to get found. And that's what this week is going to introduce. We have a whole class, CIS 255 or 257 one of those two, that is focused on that. So one week of what we're going to talk about here will not encompass everything. Um, we have a whole class about it. So if you look at week 14, SEO strategies. Uh, here we're just talking about some SEO. You wrote some blogs. You wrote some content last week. Uh, I, I've read over your blog so far. Um, they look pretty good. Uh, you clearly know what you're talking about on your website. That, that's why it's your website. Now we want it to be able to be found by more people. The only people that know that your website exists is me because you submitted the assignment and I, I saw it. And I guess if people go back to the Padlet and follow people's links, okay, more people will see your site. But now we want to know about other, we want to have other people out there know about our site. So you're going to take stock about what your website is about, and you're going to start identifying my website's about this, about that, about this keyword, about this topic. You're going to start developing these keywords. You're just simply you know, writing them down and such. Because there's going to be an assignment where you submit that. I've got a link in the resources where I have the full detailed article on Wikipedia. You can read that. It's optional on Wikipedia, what is SEO, and stuff like that. 
And then there's a link that you that you will need to look at because it's part of the assignment. A list of search engines. So guys over there in the corner, do you have a Matt and a Angie? Can you, can you be a little bit softer, please? Are you on topic at the topic at the moment? You should be on this topic, not something else. So on the search engines here, um, let's take a look at this. Let's follow this link right here because we just looked at three search engines, Yahoo, Google, and Bing. But here's a list of hundreds of more search engines that you might not have ever heard of. So let's check this out right here. Under the search engines, click that link, list of search engines. This is under resources, week 14. So search engines, okay, scrolling down, um, let's see, let's jump over here, I guess this, um, what's the best thing, okay, let's scroll down here till you find this result where we see accountancy. Here we start to see these um, categories of, if you're interested on accounting and financial things, Here's a search engine that focuses on that. If you're interested in business, here's a search engine that focuses on that. <coughs> now, Google and Yahoo and Bing and all of that can, in theory, find what these are finding, but these search engines are focused on these particular things, such as the dark web. Never click on these, actually. Um, education. Chegg. How many of you have, have heard of Chegg before? A few people. So. That's a book-related website, right? Like renting books or something like that. So this is a search engine related to that. And skills up for academic materials. Hey, I'm in college. Maybe I want to know about this stuff. Library of Congress, Google Scholar, a site, citing website. What else? Events, food, yumly. So there's a search engine all about recipes. Yeah, I can find those recipes on a regular search engine, but these search engines focus on that. And sometimes the search engines can't go deeper than a certain level. That's the basic idea of the dark web. It's like the stuff that is not easily find findable. Um, it's not exactly the same thing, but something like Facebook, in a vague sense, is the dark web in terms that sometimes Google cannot get into it too far because maybe an account is private. So that's when some of these search engines might be valuable because I saw over here, job, job sites. I don't really go to Google maybe to search for jobs. I go to a specific search engine, Glassdoor, Craigslist, uh, Yahoo Hot Jobs. Back in my day, we had Monster. Oh, there it is still there. So it's still around, monster.com. So here's a bunch of search engines on specific things, WebMD for medical, news people, real estate, video games. Maybe I'm searching for specific things like maps, multimedia like videos and stuff. Prices, I want to look up the prices of things. Look at all of these search engines where I can go get a great deal. I'm showing you this website. Uh, this article because it's going to be related to your assignment that you do this week where you will explore an alternative operate uh, an alternative search engine we've got the famous one of course Google and then people say well what else is there besides that there's other things like in other countries there's Yandex in China I believe Yandex no Yandex I think is in Russia maybe we've got Baidu in China we've got there's a bunch of like search engines that are specific, country specific that I have never heard of. But those countries is like number one higher than Google. I think it shows it over here somewhere by location, maybe, by model, by popularity. Anyway, so that article is going to lead into your assignment in a little bit. If I go back to Canvas. There's a reading over here to give you a little bit of help because you're, you're going to need to create some keywords. You're going to need to figure out keywords. You're going to need to figure out what might people search for to find me. So there's going to be a reading there with some concepts to learn. Topic buckets, related terms, long tail keywords. 
and another great link about reading some of that. So a couple of readings, one required, one optional. I do recommend the optional one. And the actual assignment for the week, there's only one assignment this week, it's due Sunday. We're already, on, we're already in December. This is going to be due December 1st, end of the year. And so the assignment on that, um, <clears throat> you, can, you can get help on this, either from a classmate, a family member, a friend, or whatever. You do have to cite who helped you, but you can get some help here. You have to tell the person what your website's about. That's kind of obvious. You're going to help me on my website, but let me tell you what my website is about first. In a Word document, you're going to develop these three things, three big ideas. Um, there's going to be a top. There's going to be a section that you call topic buckets. These are the big ideas. These are like the simple words. I searched for web design. That would be an example of a topic bucket. It's way too big. You know, this bucket holds a lot. So you're going to develop. You're going to write down three big ideas of what your site is. Not specific yet, just three big ideas. Then you're going to go into the five little details. These are the long tail keywords. What does that mean? Well, when you read the reading, that'll make a little more sense. But these are the details. When I search more specifically, what did I search for? Web design in Chula Vista, affordable web design in Chula Vista. You know, that's the detail. That's the long tail. That's the specific thing. So think about your website and what like specific thing might a person search for. Or, if you don't know what they might search for, what, what do you want people to know your site is about? This is the five little details, the five long tail. So affordable lunch, organic pizza ingredients, highest rated recipe for hamburgers. You know, what is the specific detail? Go to any search engine you want. Uh, Google, Bing, Yahoo, Yandex, Baidu, etc. And search, plug in the two of those five long tail words that you figured out. And then in a Word document, um, you can tell me what are more of those suggested terms it gives you. Right? When I did a search over here, here's my long tail keyword. I got very specific. I did a search. At the bottom, usually somewhere, or maybe on the side, the search engine might tell you other suggestions. Let's see, on this one, I don't see it right away, but when I was, what I would also accept is when you're typing, so you're going to get suggested somewhere. Sometimes I see it that it's on the side, sometimes I see it at the bottom or the top, and sometimes I see suggestions when you're typing. That's what I'm looking for either on the side, at the bottom, top, or when you're typing. One of the suggestions it's also giving you, because the search engine is trying to say, you seem to be searching for this. And if you also search for these things, these might be helpful. This is what other people are searching for. So on two of your, on your little detailed keywords, on the long tail keywords, uh, tell me what the search engine is telling you. Uh, what are some examples there that it's giving you? If you had a teammate, list their name. If you, if you, if, what I mean by the teammate is this is optional. If you talk with someone else, here's what my website is about. If you just knew the name about it, what would you search for? What do you think it's about? You know, if you tell someone your business's name and you ask them, what do you think my website's about? That's some keyword research there because they say, okay, your website, it's called PMD Interactive. Uh, obviously, it's about video games, right? Well, no, actually, our website's about. Uh, the inter interactivity of websites and web design. So just by my name, someone thought of a keyword that wasn't really what my business was, but that's valuable to figure out what is someone else, um, you know, what does someone else think about it? Before you knew about it, what is a Google? You know, now we know what it is, but before that, what is, what is a Google? What is even that word? It sounds like a baby's made up, you know, word. Um, before you heard about Bing, what's a Bing? Sounds like a sound effect or something, but it's a search engine. So, like Twitter, before you heard about Twitter, what's a Twitter? It's obviously a website about birds, right? Bird watching, bird hobbies. No. So, um, getting feedback from people um, would be useful. It's optional. And if you do get help from people, you have to just tell me who they were. Just write, write their name and such. 
the, th the last part of this. Go to the search engine, go to the list of search engines, you know, the thing that's in the resources there, the list of search engines. Um, find a search engine besides Google or Bing or Yahoo. And then tell me why you selected that search engine. What's, what is it about or why is it relevant to you or why do you think people might use it to find you? So you're going to do a quick research on one of those alternative search engines and tell me about it. Uh, upload your Word document. If you don't have a Word document, you can uh, output it to PDF, upload it to Canvas. And that breaks down what you have to do. Do by Sunday. Figure out three big topics, what your site is about. Figure out five smaller details. Tell me some of the suggestions the search engine is telling you. And then go research a um, couple of, uh, go research a search engine and tell me about it. And that's all due by Sunday the 1st, midnight. And all the points are there. Uh, the part about your teammate again, that's totally optional, so it's, it's just zero points. That's what you need to do for the next assignment. You'll have some time at the moment to work on it if you'd like. Also, any assignments you have not completed, you still have a chance to complete them. Uh, we have the final week of class is, if we look a little bit ahead, December starts up. We have one more week where we're going to have on the second, the final project given out to you. And then you're going to have the whole time until Wednesday the 11th to, to do it. Uh, our final day is going to be on Wednesday the 11th. So I have sent the email about that and I'll send it again. Wednesday, no, uh, December 11th is our final day, not Monday. We will not have a class on that Monday. We're going to have a class on that Wednesday. That's just something that the school does. So you're going to turn in your final assignment. There will probably be an extra credit thing that day on Wednesday the 11th. So if you want to turn in any late work, you need to turn it in by the end of the first week of December, next week. So we're going to focus on the final assignment. So any late work has got to be done by December the 7th. I'll put that on Canvas in a moment. You can still do the late work. You can still get some points, zero points, is worse than some points. So if you're a little behind, you can still do it. But that's all going to be due by the 7th. If you remember to do it and turn it in on Friday the 13th, bad luck to you. I won't accept it. you got to turn it in by the 7th. And then the final day of class is the 11th. And this assignment is due on the 1st. Any questions? OK, so as usual, I recorded this. If you want to ever replay it, Quick reminder, all of the videos on previous lessons, if you ever want to replay them, are over on my YouTube link. That is youtube.com slash instructor Victor C. Don't forget the C at the end. There is another instructor Victor. Don't look at his videos. They are lame. Look at my videos. Instructor Victor C. And that's it for the moment. We'll have some lab time. Don't forget to sign in if you didn't do so. And uh, if you need any help, call us over when you've got this assignment due on Sunday.